You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, sponsored by Essentia Health. Here, our hobbies become our work, and our work becomes our passion. But when joint pain or injuries keep us from doing what we love, it can affect our entire way of life. That's why we meet these challenges head on. Whatever your good day looks like, we'll find it together. This is Essentia Health Orthopedics and Sports Medicine, like nowhere else. Visit EssentiaHealth.org. Hello and welcome to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Matt Wellens, the Bulldogs hockey beat writer at the Duluth News Tribune. And I'm Zach Schneider, the television voice of UMD Hockey on My9 Sports. It's frozen season in Bulldog country. Cue the music frozen if we have the rights to that. Or maybe uh, we'll just insert a ripoff of, of Frozen right now as, as I read this segment. far exceeds our budget, I don't, would yeah, imagine. Yeah. Anyways, it's frozen season in Bulldog country, which has nothing to do with the Disney movie uh, that my son, thankfully, is not a fan of. The UMD men are playing in the NCHC Frozen Faceoff this weekend at XL Energy Center in St. Paul, taking on Denver at 4.07 p.m. Friday. North Dakota and Western Michigan play in the late semifinal. Championship is Saturday. The UMD women are in the NCAA Frozen Four at Penn State University, taking on Northeastern in a rematch of last year's Frozen Four semifinal in Erie. That game is at 2.30 p.m. on Friday. Ohio State and Yale meet in the other semifinal. National championship is Sunday. Zach, I, I thought on Saturday you summed this up, this era of Bulldog <laughs> hockey up uh, really well in, in a tweet. Maybe you can sum that tweet up for uh, friends of ours like Anna Klein who have, have, have quit Twitter. Uh, so she probably didn't see it. Uh, we're in the glory days right now of Bulldog hockey, aren't we? Yeah, we are living them. And I, I felt like it was perspective week for me a little bit because with the dogs on the road, the men's team on the road, I should say, uh, for the first round of the NCHC playoffs for the first time uh, since I started calling the games, I got a weekend off that I don't normally get off. And so I was able to, to just watch the games uh, in St. Cloud in Minneapolis this past weekend, watch as a fan. And um, yeah, I mean, with the women going to a second straight Frozen Four it's still entirely within the realm of possibility that the men will be in a fifth straight frozen four minus the one canceled tournament in a couple of weeks here. And so when you think about having two programs that are on the level that the Bulldogs are on right now, that is not just remarkable and amazing from a, a talent perspective, a recruiting perspective, a performance perspective. But it, I was talking to Bruce uh, after I tweeted that, it's just crazy. It's insane. The level that these two programs have played at over the last four or five years. And it's best summed up. I think I was talking to Bruce uh, again, and I said, the men's team this year without winning that series in St. Cloud was already a virtual lock and is now an absolute lock to make the NCAA tournament and try to extend its streak of frozen fours. And I think for the large part, the people in the locker room and, and the fan base would classify this right now today as maybe a little bit of a disappointing season. Um, they hovered around 500 for a lot of the year. They didn't win some of those bigger games. They didn't sweep a lot of teams. It's crazy that that's the standard, right? They're going to be in the tournament. They're going to have a chip in a chair and a shot. And I'm not betting against this team once they get into the playoffs. We'll talk about that more later, but um, yeah, I think anybody who is a fan of UMB hockey right now um, definitely better understand that this doesn't happen all that often and um, just enjoy it. And I want the players to enjoy what they're doing too, because it's, uh, it's just so much fun to, to watch and be part of. Yeah, it is crazy right now that we're calling this that at one time, and maybe some fans still are, but this year's being called a down year for, for the UMD men because they're tied for fourth and they tie for fourth in the NCHC and are the fifth seed. But, but here they are going to, um, I believe seventh straight NCAA tournament. Uh, it would be eight if uh, you wanted to count 2020 when they were also a, a lock for, for the tournament as well. So, you know, really eight straight NCAA tournament berths. Um, it, 
it, it's crazy. And, and I, I did, if you go to the Duluth news tribune.com or the rink live.com, check out the thumbs up, thumbs down, three stars in there. I gave a big thumbs up to Scott Sadler to Bora Kroll. And I kind of using Zach's tweet broke down, um, you know, the, this era, the streaks that both programs are on for conference tournaments, like playing in the frozen face off and being in the conference semis every year. I think a lot of, Bulldog fans maybe take that for granted. That's an impressive streak that some thought may end after this year, and it's still going. Uh, the, the women have been, you know, minus a, a hiccup against Bemidji in there since more Krolls took it over. They've been in the conference semis, and, and now both are on these NCAA tournament runs. Uh, the only program that can really, when you put together the men and the women, um, that can match this would be the, the Gophers uh, men and women in the 2000s when both of those programs were really dominant and, and not only making it to Frozen Fours and, and NCAA tournaments, but winning national championships. We're going to take a short break here. When we come back, Zach and I are going to be joined by the dynamic duo of UMD women's hockey goaltending, Emma Soderberg and Jojo Schobeck. They're going to help us preview the Frozen Four coming up at Penn State. And then Bruce Siski is going to join us later on as well to preview the Frozen Faceoff. Um, if I can make it through this podcast without mixing up Frozen Face Off and Frozen Four, it will be amazing. Uh, you're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm McHatton. I'm Jess Myers, and we are the co-hosts of the Rink Live Podcast. We really pride ourselves on finding some unique guests and, and covering some of the topics of the day, not only in college hockey, but kind of across a broad spectrum. Yep. We also talk uh, junior hockey. We'll get some of that talk in there as well. Uh, women's hockey, men's hockey. We try to talk to people from throughout the game and actually from all over the country. That's been one of the great things on Zoom. And Mick and I are kind of OG, the Rink Live guys. We were here from the start about three years ago now when, when things got off the ground, but we brought a fair amount of college hockey experience to, to this job. I uh, went to Minnesota Duluth. I covered college hockey starting then when I was a student. I've covered the Frozen Four 28 times, and I primarily cover the Minnesota Gophers now for the Rink Live, but dabble in a little bit of everything. And I've covered St. Cloud State Hockey. Now this will be my 12th season. So uh, please check us out on the Rink Live podcast on Mondays. Welcome back to the Bulldog Insider Podcast brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Matt Wellens, joined by Zach Schneider. Also joining us on the podcast are the Frozen Four bound goaltenders of the UMD women's hockey team. Uh, back for a second time this season on the podcast, we have Emma Soderberg and sophomore Jojo Chobek. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah, and as Emma pointed out before we started recording, uh, back to back years now, we have her on our, our, our Frozen Four podcast. No Ashton Bell this time. She's off uh, on her Olympic tour still here. Um, but it was you guys got to see Ashton recently, right? She dropped by uh, Ritter Arena on, on Friday. That was cool, right? Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, we didn't know. Like, she was snapping us from the airport, like, oh, so close, but so far away. And then, like, she just, like, showed up at Ritter, which was pretty cool. Yeah, it was really awesome to see her. Everyone was super excited about it, like, running, giving her hugs, stuff like that. So she totally set you up even. To, you guys had no clue she was coming. Yeah, we had no idea. Yeah. Well played by Ashton. Uh, for both of you, uh, the Frozen Four, back-to-back -back years for, for the Bulldogs, for you now heading to, uh, and of course, both years, it's in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, we'll be in the middle of nowhere, Pennsylvania, this week instead of the shores of, of Lake Erie. Uh, what's it like for, for the two of you to be heading back to the Frozen Four again this season? Emma, I'll start with you. What's this like? Like, it's an amazing feeling. It's like we work for all year. Like, you have your whole summer working out. You get back in the fall and just, like, as a group working towards something. And finally, like, being closer to it is, like, a great feeling. Uh, we worked very hard for this, so it's fun that we get to experience this together. JoJo, how about you? Two for two now in, in, in the career here on Frozen Fours. Yeah, it's kind of funny, actually. It's uh, a little bit different than everyone else because, you know, we've been here two years and it's all I know, kind of like we go to the Frozen Four every year, according to being a sophomore. Um, but yeah, it's really exciting. Um, super cool experience. It was probably the best time I had all year last year. So really looking forward to going back. 
we talked earlier in the episode about this being maybe the golden years of, of UMD hockey with what uh, your team is doing back to back frozen fours and what the men have done in their recent run of frozen fours. And now we get to ask you two the same question that we've asked them uh, for the last several years. What's more fun the first time you go to the frozen four or that feeling when you know you get to go back for a second straight year? I would say the first time was probably more exciting um, just because I think the first time you get to go, it's like, it's unbelievable. You're like, I can't believe this is actually happening. Can't believe I'm actually here the second time, just as exciting, but it's almost like, it's like a routine now, kind of. I agree a little bit with Jojo there. And the same thing, like this year, like we are like, we're going to be in the tournament. Like last year we were hoping and it was such a high when we got the bid to the tournament so that's why I feel like it was felt like a bigger thing last year but like this year like we knew we were gonna be able to be there so like it was a great feeling to that we put ourselves in a good position early on you two have both played huge roles uh, in getting this team to, to back-to-back Frozen Fours here this year. And I want to read a quote that came from Coach Maura Kroll from her press conference uh, last week when we were talking about uh, the both of you. And, and um, Coach, she was talking about Emma here. She's just a remarkable teammate, you guys. She's been our starting goalie for a year and a half, and JoJo got the start on Saturday. And Sodes is such a supporter of JoJo and just an absolute team player. It's rare that you see players, especially goalies who are dueling, treat each other as well as those two do. And I can't say enough about Sodes as a teammate. She's just super impressive. Jojo, anything to add what what coach said there? Is, is she dead on to, to what kind of teammate Sodes was while you were man in the net? Absolutely, 100%. I think she's so supportive all the time. And even before games, um, she'll talk to me, be like, you know, what are your three non-negotiables? Just like things like that. And then during the game, I love like the little TV timeouts and we always uh, skate to the bench, have a little chat, you know, what's going on with the game? What are we seeing? Um, And I also think that she's really good in vocalizing to the team what um, we need as goalies and like kind of speaks for us. Like um, I think sometimes when we're younger, you don't have as much of a voice. So I think Emma's a really good voice for um, all the goalies on our team, kind of letting them know what we need from them or what we're seeing and things like that. Emma, what makes you such a, a fan and a, a supporter of, of JoJo here? Well, it's just like we have fun together every day. And I think it's like as goalies, you're kind of alone on a team. It's like being ha- able to have a goalie group where you like have each other's back. Like we have that fun on the ice and that support for each other is huge. It just like makes you comfortable and you know, like you have people with you all the time. And like Jojo is always there for me and I love being there for her too. And it's like, just because someone else is doing good doesn't mean that's bad for you. Like, yes, we're competing for time, but we're on the same team. So like, if she's doing good, that's good for the team, you know? I've said over and over again on this podcast that the the dynamics and the psyche of the goalie room are are fascinating to me. Uh, We've talked about it with your team and the men's team. And with you guys, we talked with Jojo a couple of weeks ago, Emma, right when you got back from the Olympics, she had played so well in your absence that now we said there was a goaltending controversy kind of for UMU women's hockey and the coach is now a decision to make between the two of you. But um, the two of you, have said a a long time or the entire season that you're such good friends. Is it harder to know that you're the one that's playing and that your friend is not playing, or is it harder to see your friend play in a role that you want to be in? Because both of you are competitive. You want to be in the games, but only one of you can do it. So which, which role is harder for you or is do they both come with their own challenges and how do you approach it? Once coach tells you who's going to be playing on any given night. I think, I mean, I would probably say that not playing is harder um, just because like you want to do that, obviously. But at the same time, it's not like I don't want her to be successful and do things like that. And like Emma said, I think it's more of like a team mindset. Like at the end of the day, we want the team to win. So it's it's not much of like a conflict in my mind. Like it's whatever is best for our team. We're going to go ahead and support that. And at the end of the day, it's not really our decision. Like that decision gets made for us. So whatever happens, we're going to support that 100%. Yeah, I think Jodo said it very well there. Like you always want to play, but when you don't, it's just like 
this is what is best for the team right now. It might not be me, but whatever ends up with a win for the team is going to be the best. And that's just how you have to look at it. Like it's for the team and we enjoy being with each other. So it's like easy to be happy for the other one's success. Have either of you been on a team before and, and competing with another goaltender for the starting role where the relationship wasn't a good one? And, and what kind of impact can, can that have on, on a team? I have been very fortunate with goaltending partners. Like here at UMD, it's been good all the way through. Like now JoJo and Holly, but before that, Maddie and Hannah. And in Sweden, I was also, I played with the same girl for four years and we had a good relationship. Yeah, I would say pretty much the same thing. Um, I think I've been very fortunate um, back when I played youth hockey and things like that. Super supportive goalie partners. I think goalies are very aware of the fact that there's always that like kind of internal competition, but that it it's you can't let it affect the team. And you do want to be supportive of each other, especially since I feel like sometimes we are like kind of on the outside of things and at practice and stuff, it's always like, oh, forwards and defense are competing against each other, like who can score more goals. But like at the end of the day, we're all just trying to stop the puck. So it's like we're our own little team. Like it's always going to be a little kind of family thing. Yeah, the players are always out for us. So we need to have each other's back. Yep. I was going to say, they're trying to score goals. You're out there trying to kill their confidence that they can't put the, put the puck in the net ever, um, which, hey, maybe that's what's made Bulldogs uh, so well with scoring lately. They have to take out some pretty tough goaltenders in, in practice. Emma, we, we've talked a little bit about this as, as you've returned to the net here for the NCAA tournament. I'm wondering that that transition coming back from the Olympics to college hockey, you know, what was the hardest part uh, for you? I know initially you said you were going to rip that Band-Aid off and I guess uh, getting over uh, a little harder coming from Beijing to Duluth than, than uh, Sweden to Duluth, huh? Yeah. So the thing that was hard in the beginning for me, I think, was mostly like being so tired. Like I would sleep like 10 hours a night, but I would wake up and be exhausted like throughout the day. So that made it hard for me to get into that routine. Like, like you said, like I wanted to rip the band aid off and get into it, but it took way longer than I thought to get back into it. Yeah, I think we saw this weekend Noah Cates was finally kind of himself as as well after he also attempted to to rip the band-aid off and and play right away. So 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 for you it was just adjusting to what it was a 14 hour difference between here and Beijing, right? Yeah, that's correct. And yeah, I feel like it almost took me two weeks to like feel good again, which is a little longer than I hoped for. And you didn't get right back in there either. It was a game or two um, that the team played with JoJo still after you returned stateside. I'm not sure how much you were practicing or whatnot, but it took a while to get back into the games. But I'm sure you kept pretty good tabs on UMD while you were over there, or at least got a, a breakdown once you got back. And you said that the team had put itself in pretty good position for the tournament. Part of that was shutout wins over Ohio state and Wisconsin while you were gone. So did it make it better that your partner was, was playing pretty well and she could say, Hey, I got the next two or three games. Well, well you, you know, get back to normal on in Duluth and then we can go back to business as normal here. Well, first of all, it was just like seeing how Jojo was playing. Like I didn't have to worry about the team. I was like, didn't have to like stay up and watch the scores. I would just like wake up in the morning, like, yes, another win, like, and see like the numbers she was putting up was huge. And then also like how she's been playing is it's amazing. Like it didn't like having to rush me back. Like I could get more time. And at the same time, like we were getting wings. So like why change the concept? I was going to say, I nearly ran myself ragged trying to cover the bulldogs and and watch all your games uh, uh across the globe and i was going to joke zach and i get jet lagged just from you know traveling to denver and back to duluth and everything like that so um props to trying to, to fight through beijing there emma i think you touched on it a little bit here having a teammate like jojo who's playing at the level that she was that was that was a big help for you as as you transitioned, you know, and and got over the the jet lag and everything, and and transitioned back into normal college life and and everything. That was a big help, huh? Yeah, it was very good for me to have that, and like for our team, like still, like Jojo's great goalie. Whenever she plays, she'll stop the puck, and for me, it was less stressful coming back. When you're on the bench and the others in, in goal, and you kind of talked a little bit about it, what roles do the two of you tend to play to help the other? Is, is it similar or different? What's that dy dynamic like? 
Yeah, I would say that it's pretty similar. Um, like I said, like both in during the TV timeouts and stuff like that, we always come and chat with each other. And honestly, I think we always just kind of have like a fun environment, like being in game sometimes can get like a little stressful and um, like everything that's going on with the team. So I think like getting that kind of reset, like Emma will be in net sometimes and we'll just kind of like wave at her from down the ice. Um, we do the little puck shuffle during um, the the games at Amsoil, stuff like that. Just little stuff to make sure we're still having fun and keep things light between us. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, like very lighthearted. Like we don't know, we don't usually talk much about the games. If it's like a specific situation, we'll ask like, what did you see here? But otherwise we talk about other stuff. I always like take out when Joda's in that I always take my glove off and do a thumbs up and I hold it up until she sees me. And then we're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's fun. Do we make too much of the goaltending situation? Matt and I are, are fascinated by it. I think i um, especially with Jojo's emergence in, in your absence to the Olympics, Emma, but I mean, goaltending is such a visible position on the ice, but is it no different? I think you talked earlier about accepting your role and, and we talk about that with players who are on the third and fourth lines too, who might've been stars at their high schools, but get to UMD and have to accept maybe a slightly different role than they're used to. Do you to view yourself as, as no different in that, that you just kind of have to accept the role that you're given, whether it's to be the starter or the backup, depending on, on how things shake out? A little bit, I would say. And the thing for goal is like for a player, if you're on the third line, you can still get a couple of shifts, but for a goalie, it's all or nothing kind of with a game. So I think that's why it's like difference between goalies and players. Yeah. And I also think that when like for players and stuff, if they're put on different lines, uh, it's sometimes like, okay, what am I doing? Like to not have me be on those other lines. Whereas with goalies there, there's always going to be someone who's playing and someone who's not playing. So you could be doing everything right. And it's like, maybe this is who we needed today and stuff like that. So it's a little bit different, but yeah, kind of the same in the whole uh, mindset things. Goalies are fascinating. You're fascinating players. You're fascinating people. Uh, the mindset and everything uh, that goes into the strategy and everything. It's, it's fun. Goalies are fun. That's why we like having, having y'all on the, on the podcast as, as well. Uh, some quick hits before we go, let the two of you go. Cause I know you got busy lives right now. Uh, with uh, travel coming up here to the Frozen Four. Uh, Emma, which Swedish Olympic jersey is your favorite, the blue or the yellow? The blue. The blue? Bam. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite, too. It's awesome. We're Jojo, so happy you said blue. Otherwise, we would have been very confused. We would have been heartbroken. Yeah, it's sitting in my closet right now. How many jerseys did you get to bring back? Did you just have a one yellow and one blue? or? Yeah, we got both of our like game jerseys. Okay. Jojo, if I remember right, your favorite Olympic jersey was the uh, USA blue one? No, I like the whites. I didn't You were the whites. I'm, okay. I like the whites. I'm classic like that. Okay. Yeah. Emma, what, what's the non-Swedish? Again, I, 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 the correct answer is the Swedish blue. That was That's the best jersey. Zach and I are on the same page of that. Um, what non-Swedish jersey, what's the best one? What was the best one in the Olympics this year? I'm pretty sure you hated this one, but the Canada's blacks. So yes. sweet. The red outline. I thought it was so good. Emma listens to the podcast. We do hate that one. We hate that one so much. <laughs> it's because we're old and we can't see. <laughs> and uh, I couldn't pick Ashton out of pictures on the wire services. I'm scrounging around for him and I couldn't read her number. Who is the better goalie in the shootout? Which one of you you think is better in a shootout? I'm going to go with Emma because we play um, Showcase Showdown uh, every week against, so it's like the the upperclassmen versus underclassmen, and the underclassmen lose like every time, so. <laughs> I mean, I think Jody is good at shootouts, so it's just <laughs> like, as you said, upperclassmen against underclassmen, I think like upperclassmen should win. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen the coaching staff move forwards to back to defense. Um, which one of you would be best suited to move from goalie to forward or defense? Like we would have to put Holly at forward. That's what I was gonna none say. of us, none of us. It's Holly that would move up. It's Holly for mm -hmm. sure. Is, is she the star when you guys are on the outdoor rinks? I saw you were in uh, 
at the Portman rink uh, recently, which is in my neighborhood. Holly's the the, the star, huh? Yeah, yeah you should have seen when we did some coaching this fall. She was ripping shots. I don't want to ruin Matt's quick hits thing and take up too much time here, but take a moment to talk about Holly because we've talked about Ben Pat, the number three goalie on the men's side, and we haven't talked that much about Holly. We talked mainly about the two of you and the dynamic between you two in the goalie room, but what does Holly add? And she's a player that, you know, more so than you two who doesn't know that which one is going to play. She probably knows she's not going to play, um, you know, more times than not, unless something catastrophic happens to the two of you. So um, what does she bring every day in terms of attitude and uh, and additions to the team? I would say like, it's such a blast to be around Holly. She's like always cracking jokes. Like she does weird voices. And when she talks to me, like she says my name in a funny way and always brings great energy to the rink and practices. So I think she really brings higher energy to our goalie group. Yeah, Holly's, she's hilarious. She's so funny. Um, and then I think she she kind of reads us pretty well too. Like, especially when we were, uh, when I was playing Minnesota a couple weekends ago, um, after the first period, it was like really tense. And she said some joke to me and I'm like, like dying laughing in the locker room. And I'm like, not the time, but it was, it was perfect. It got me really relaxed. And she, even being on the bench with her is just, it's so much fun. We're always just making little one-liners comments, um, doing different things, but yeah, she's hilarious. She's awesome. Mm -hmm. How does she say your name, Emma? Uh, what is, uh, how does she do it? Soderberg. Yeah. <laughs> There were some interesting pronunciations from some of the uh, announcers in the Olympics too. I can't remember them now, but weird emphasis is on, <laughs> on your last name sometimes. So it's, uh, who's a better, uh, now we're going on complete tangent here. Uh, better sniper, Holly or coach Bellamy. Um, I don't know. Well, Holly's never shot on us. Mm -hmm. Lou shoots on us in goalie clinic all the time. And she can really, she can really pick corners on us sometimes. Um, but uh, I've only seen Holly shoot on like 12 year olds. So that's a I, tough call. I'm going to give it to Holly just because we watched a uh, Lewin rebound game and she's been slacking her, my freshman and sophomore year, she would snipe us all the time, but she's not where she used to be there now. So I'm giving it to Holly. That's that's an upperclassman who can give that answer. I was going to say, if JoJo yeah. starts in this semifinal game, we know I that Laura Bellamy now. listens to the podcast. Yeah, if, if all of a sudden I get to Penn State and Emma's <laughs> nowhere to be found, um, <laughs> we'll, we'll know why. Uh, Lou wouldn't let her on the plane. Um, which forward or defenseman would make a good goalie? Maggie. Yeah, that would probably be my answer too. I think we had Nina do it last year and she was, she wasn't great at it. I'm not going to lie. Uh, Nina's kind of small for goalie, isn't she? She wanted to give it a go. I think she was kind of surprised um, with what it entailed. Mm -hmm. I think Megan did the same thing like two years ago. She tried it out. I never saw her myself, but I just, she's very like flexible. So I could see her doing a good job. I look forward to Maggie Flaherty wearing goalie gear in uh, her, her, her gift next year and, and on the Amsoil video board um, after wearing the Bulldog costume uh, this past year. All right, maybe Emma's trash talking to Lou already answered this, this question here, but uh, who is in goal a year from now when the Bulldogs are playing at home in the Frozen Four at Amsoil Arena? JoJo. JoJo? Yeah. This is my way of asking if Emma's coming back or not. <laughs> Zach and I, I think, are 0 for 3 on this podcast of begging people to come back. We didn't get Rev, we didn't get Mackenzie Revering to come back when we begged her last year. Uh, Demi Crossman, we've tried to come back when they have eligibility. Th th this is it, oh, Emma. You're, you're handing the reins to JoJo after this year? I mean, I'm graduating, so. That's a good answer. I wouldn't, come, I wouldn't go for a, a master's degree either <laughs> or anything. Emma, what are you graduating with a degree in? organizational management and i have a minor in hr okay what do you what are you going to do with those degrees i have no idea i do not know what i want to do with my life you're you just know gonna... if you're going to stay in the states or go back to sweden i'm going back to sweden i have like all my family there so half the bulldogs are over playing in sweden anyways <laughs> right now so 
you got a lot of former teammates over there. Yeah. All right. We will we will wrap it up there. Uh, we look forward to watching JoJo uh, in, in the goal next year at, at Amsoil Arena with with Ashton playing uh, back in front of her and, and such. JoJo, is that, is that exciting to think about? Last question here. A Frozen Four. You've gone to Pennsylvania twice. It kind of is that going to be motivation going into next year to to play a Frozen Four at home? Oh yeah, definitely. We definitely plan to be back next year and uh, really looking forward to next season. Emma, will you at least be defending a championship next year? That too. Emma, will you at least be coming back to watch the Frozen Four in Duluth? Well, it would depend on my own season. If I play in Sweden, it's like playoff time there too. Okay. All right. Well, that means she's not coming back. She'll be (laughs) winning playoff titles in in Sweden there. All right, Emma and Jojo, thank you so much uh, for making time for us and, and good luck in the Frozen Four. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to take a final break. Bruce Siski joins us next to preview the Frozen Faceoff. You're listening to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health. Hi there. My name is Dan Williamson, and I am one of the hosts for the Duluth News Tribune Minute Podcast. Hear the most important news of the day, including weather and sports from Duluth, Minnesota, and from around the Northlands. Join me, as well as Barrett Chase, and our fellow reporters as we take you through the local news you need to start your day. Episodes are released Monday through Friday and are available on Apple, Spotify, and wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you for supporting local journalism. Welcome back to the Bulldog Insider Podcast, brought to you by Essentia Health. I'm Matt Wellens. Zach Schneider is also with us. We now welcome back to the podcast the voice of Bulldog Hockey on KDAL 610, Bruce Siski. He's here to help us with a quick preview of the NCHC Frozen face-off. Uh, unlike me, Bruce was at both games in St. Cloud this weekend where UMD swept the Huskies with a 5-2 victory on Friday that I saw in person. Uh, and then there was a 4-3 overtime win on Saturday that I watched on an iPad uh, while wrapping up my my women's hockey coverage. Bruce Noah Cates, I think of the term we've used at, at UMD before, Captain Clutch, uh, whether that was Carson Kuhlman in 2018, Parker McKay in 2019. It's been a big part of UMD's postseason runs in the past. Can Noah Cates be that guy? Does he have to be that guy for them to make a run? I think ideally you don't want him to have to be. Um, it's just kind of the way it worked out with Parker McKay and Carson Kuhlman. But at the same time, He's got every tool that you need. Again, he's great on the boards. He wins battles. He can make plays. He can shoot the puck. He's not a high volume shooter. You know, guys like you know Nick Sweeney and Cole Kepke have been in the past, but he can make impactful plays by shooting the puck. And we saw that last weekend in St. Cloud. If that continues, yeah, I think it makes UMB a more dangerous team. But Ideally, you don't need him to carry the team because you've got four lines that can make plays. You've got four lines that can score goals. And we saw it on Saturday. You know, Scott Sandlin rarely used his fourth line last year in that five overtime game against North Dakota. He used his fourth line this past weekend against St. Cloud State because he felt like they were playing well and deserved that opportunity. The trust factor is there with Carter Loney and his line mates right now where it wasn't necessarily there on that fourth line last year. It could be a big difference for this team going forward. I tell you what, a week ago or two weeks ago, we talked on this podcast how the men's team doesn't have necessarily that superstar game breaker type of player on this year's team. Noah Cates is right on the verge of that. He doesn't have the same skill set as some of the guys they've had in the years in years past. But on Saturday at St. Cloud, you saw what he can do to take over a game, to score a couple big goals in a time when they needed it. He does have that x factor and it it needed to come out on saturday i hope bruce is right and it doesn't need to come out and maybe they're ahead by a couple goals in the third period instead of trailing uh, as we go forward but he's a guy that if they need somebody to step up and that's when when coolman and mckay became great captains as well was this time of year they were good captains before that for the rest of the year but when they kind of etched their name in umb hockey folklore was in the postseason when they needed somebody to step up and those were the two guys who basically said in both those years 18 and 19 that the season's not going to end until we say it's going to end which is in the national championship that's how they play and that's frankly how Noah Cates played on Saturday night in St. Cloud. 
and the other thing I would say here is, you know, the older guys all have to do this. And, and Colby Roth, he scored 13 goals this year. Ten of them came against teams that finished above UMD in the final standings. And that happened, you know, Western, North Dakota, Denver, St. Cloud State. That happened over 16 games against those four teams. He scored 10 goals. He, he can score goals in big moments in big games. Scott Sandlin put Noah Cates back on that line with Casey Gillen and Colby Roth for the third period on Saturday. I thought they were very good. It's not a coincidence they scored the winning goal in overtime. Guys, does does Ryan Fanti have to to do what Hunter Shepard did for this team to to make a, a, a postseason run? What do we need to see out of Ryan Fanti in, in the postseason here? Uh, yes, he does need to do that. It's going to become harder and harder to score uh, starting this weekend at the X in the frozen faceoff for these guys. It's a team that's that struggled to score. It's been well documented. Um, hopefully the power play, which played better or at least produced better uh, this weekend at St. Cloud can get going a little bit. But yeah, I mean, we talk about game breakers. Noah might be that guy among the skaters, but uh, Ryan Fanti is that guy. I think when you take the whole roster, he needs to be the best player. Uh, on the team over the next couple of weeks here for UMB to, to have a realistic shot of getting back to that frozen four and uh, maybe the national title. I mean, in that first period on Saturday, Bruce, that's the reason why we didn't have to be in St. Cloud on, on Ryan Fanti's why we, we all got to go home on, on Saturday, Clinton Austin and I were camped out in the twin cities uh, waiting to see if we could go home or uh, had, or if we had to head to St. Cloud, uh, Bruce, you had already checked out of your hotel room, I believe on on saturday hoping to not have to check back in um i i guess i would it's because of ryan fanty that you didn't uh change that reservation after the first period on, on saturday right i didn't check out of the hotel i just packed up all my stuff and stuck it all into the station vehicle and was prepared to just tuck tail and drive home if they won the game and yes the only reason i didn't have to go back to the hotel is ryan fanty in that first period he was unbelievable and something to keep in mind UMD only blocked, I believe it was four shots all night on Saturday. They had been improving in that area. And I know St. Cloud State's a team. It can be difficult to, to get guys out. The angles are different in that rink on that big ice. You don't have to deal with that anymore. The rest of the games are on NHL surfaces. But I think it's going to be a point of emphasis this week. It, it get guys out in front of these shooters a little more and take a little bit more pressure off that goaltender because four shot blocks a game is not going to get it done down the stretch. Last question is, as we wrap up the podcast this week, is anyone in this frozen face-off field, does anyone feel unbeatable right now? Like every team in the league has seemed to stumble at some point down the stretch here as the NCHC beat up on each other. Uh, Nebraska Omaha played spoiler to, to a, a lot of teams, but I, I feel like no one is unbeatable right now. I mean, North Dakota and Denver shared the league title because neither one of them could close it out. Like they both had chances to have that title on their own, but uh, Denver loses uh, three of four in, in February. That that loss to UMD started a, a bit of a tough stretch for them. And and then uh, North Dakota, you know, slips up on the final night of the regular season uh, against Omaha. Um, I think maybe they just, I don't know if they got ahead of themselves after clinching a share of the Pedros or what, but does anyone in this field, Western, Denver, North Dakota, UMD, does anyone feel unbeatable to you, Zach? No, no one's unbeatable. Um, but as we've talked about uh, from a UMD perspective all season long is that the, the margin for error now becomes even thinner when you play these types of teams. Um, you know, Ryan Fanti was great in the first period on Saturday. I don't want him to have to be great in the first period on Friday uh, against Denver because the Pioneers probably will put a couple more past him than St. Cloud did, quite frankly, um, if they're allowed the type of time and space that that uh, they allowed the Huskies this past weekend. So, no, no one's unbeatable, but, uh, you know, UMD in 18 and 19 picked a perfect time to put together really what was its best stretch of hockey in those seasons. Um, this team needs to do the same. Uh, they haven't had a so if you include the, this weekend's frozen faceoff and then the tournament, there's a potential for six more games, right? This team hasn't had a six game stretch this year where they've played their best hockey. This team hasn't really had a two game stretch this year where they've played their best hockey uh, in back to back games. They're going to need that. They're going to need their best games to beat some of these teams that they're going to be playing. So um, 
but that's what you expect. And I think that's the challenge that's in front of them and it should be fun, but no, no one's unbeatable uh, for this team. And we've said that all year when they play their best hockey, they can play uh, not just with the best in the NCHC, but the best in the country, um, which is what makes them kind of a fun and dangerous team as we head into the next couple of weeks here. Bruce, what do you think of this NCHC field? Is, is there a favorite in here or uh, would a prognosticator just be like, just pick a name out of a hat and, and whatever comes out of it. That's probably, that's probably as good as, you know, trying to make a pick here. That's probably true. Uh, if you're going to put a gun to my head, which is illegal by the way, uh, and make me pick a favorite, I would probably say Denver, not because of the top seed, because I think they're the most complete team that's there. Uh, but they've, like you said, they've hit some speed bumps along the way. I, I think that there's some, they've got some vulnerability on that team and, and UMD's not beating them twice by accident. I can promise you that. Um, you know, I, I think North Dakota is a team that at times has struggled to score at times. They've struggled to defend consistently. They don't have Tyler Clevin for the Friday semifinal against Western Michigan, which I think makes that a more difficult game for North Dakota because we all know how Western Michigan can attack teams, but Western Michigan has struggled to defend. So, you know, I, I think all these teams have flaws in, in some way, shape or form, and it makes it a much more interesting tournament this weekend. And it's one of those that'll be interested to see how these teams play because there's, you know, realistically not a ton on the line this weekend for anybody they're all safely in the field nothing's going to change you're playing for you know maybe a you're moving up a seed line or two is it really worth going all out for that um I, there might be some teams that decide you know what we're gonna not gonna play our guys the same way we always do we're just gonna roll our lines we're not gonna act like these are one and done games i don't know we'll see um it should be a good tournament should be really good hockey but uh, who's going to win it way up in the air for me. It'll be a lot of fun to see how that plays out. And no third place game. How great is that? Um, really looking forward to no third place uh, game because those were some of the worst games of the year. There's a guy that Denver had a couple of years ago, a defenseman. He played two career games for the Pioneers. They were both NCHC third place games. That guy, I guarantee you, is going to miss the third place, uh, third place game. Well, my apologies to him. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'd, I'd kind of like to see North Dakota play Denver on uh, Saturday, wouldn't you? I would rather watch the Wild play the Chicago Blackhawks. <laughs> that, that's what I'm going to be doing. So, All right, guys, we're going to wrap it up there. Uh, thanks to Bruce and Zach for joining me on the show this week. Uh, huge thanks to Emma Soderberg and JoJo Schobeck for finding some time in their busy schedules uh, to chat with us as well. Bulldog Insider comes out every Thursday, and you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe and rate us. For more Bulldogs hockey coverage, visit therinklive.com and DuluthNewsTribune.com. Thanks to our sponsor, Essentia Health, for their continued support of the Bulldog Insider podcast. Uh, we're going to be back next week because the men are a lock for the NCAA tournament. Uh, so we'll be talking about uh, that series. We'll be talking, hey, maybe we'll be talking about another national championship uh, for, for the women as well. So uh, thanks for listening and, and tune in next week.